Okay, welcome everybody to uh, Brilliant Light Powers Industry Day. Uh, this is going to be a little bit different than uh, prior uh, presentations. We're uh, switching into commercial mode, and that's uh, we renamed it around Demonstration Day, Industry Day, and we have some very uh, distinguished guest speakers that uh, are affiliated with the company. We've got a new announcement that we're going to, uh, to make uh, going forward. And uh, the details of that will be uh, released later. We set up an advisory committee with some uh, very esteemed uh, uh, members of the, uh, the business community in power. And, uh, and there's, uh, we're working on uh, uh, adding more um, uh, talent and capability to our uh, management team. We've hired a, a number of new uh, executives and management uh, for uh, business development. And uh, the advisory board is... Uh, is a, a very uh, key asset in terms of uh, giving them advice and guidance and uh, helping us with the transition from uh, science and theory and moving into the, uh, the commercial realm. And um, so I'm going to um, just very briefly outline what we're going to do today. And uh, one thing I will point out, the star of the show is our uh, sun cell. And that is very very uh, exacting to the commercial design, if not the commercial design. It's got, a, um, it's got an all-carbon construction, refractory materials. It's got a uh, dual-injection liquid electrode system. And, uh, and I'll go into the details of it. But we, uh, the last demonstration we did was on July 20th up in Boston at our engineering firm, Columbia Technologies, which are here to, to speak and, and uh, address commercial pathway and timing. And uh, you'll see there is a number of things that were seemingly uh, very challenging in terms of engineering uh, limitations of that prior design that we have now conquered in, in a major uh, glorious fashion, as you'll see. This is a, really a, a very elegant design, and I'm going to demonstrate the features of how advanced that is and how it solves some of these fundamental problems of engineering to allow this to move on to, uh, to keep us on our timeline for uh, field trials the first half of 2017. So um, with that, um, our, our, our next speaker after me is doing a little introduction. Of course, we're here to talk about a new primary energy source where we take uh, the atomic hydrogen from uh, water molecules, we react it with a catalyst, and we form a more stable, much more stable form of hydrogen we call hydrino and uh, releasing hundreds of times the energy of burning hydrogen. It's, uh, it's absolutely safe. Uh, it's incredibly stable. It's lighter than air. It will vent out of the atmosphere. So we're looking at a very, very powerful primary new power source that can address the economic problems and the climate problems that the world faces. Uh, we, uh, from our perspective, and I think we'll eventually convince the world of that, is. Um, we have the solution to climate change. We have the solution of long-term uh, energy needs. We have the solution for third world energy uh, expansion, development, electrification, and, uh, and, and vast uh, improvements in quality of life and standard living in, in all countries in the world. So uh, some of the challenges that industry faces today uh, are going to be addressed with our speakers, including uh, the issue of climate change. So that's going to be, uh, economics is going to be addressed by uh, Colin Bannon, who's an executive at British uh, Telecom, and is here to tell us about the challenges he faces in his industry in terms of balancing the uh, profitability of, uh, of his operations versus uh, social responsibility and, uh, and the uh, commitment uh, that was made in Paris and other, other uh, negotiations on trying to limit the carbon dioxide emissions, and then the impact on the environment. We're no, followed up by that is going to be, and it's actually a good uh, just a position of one problem to another, is uh, Kurt Davies, who's uh, director of uh, climate investigations, is here. A uh, very long career, distinguished career, in uh, sounding alarm about the issues with uh, CO2 emissions, its impact on the environment, and the uh, long-term sustainability of uh, standard living and uh, the, the, the way that we, we uh, exist here on this planet and have to be good uh, shepherds in terms of keeping it uh, in, in, in equilibrium with, uh, with all the um, impact that we have 
uh, on its, on its uh, atmosphere with our emissions. Then we have uh, myself. I'll be back. And uh, I'll be talking about all the uh, developments, advancements in terms of the, um, the uh, engineering and uh, solutions of the engineering that we uh, have made since our July 20th demonstration up in uh, Boston. And then uh, we're going to have one of the validators that ran uh, uh, tests. We, as, I, as I said in our last demonstration, we did a number of different methodologies showing megawatt scale power. Uh, they were all internally uh, consistent in reaffirming and confirming cross, uh, ca uh, cross um, fields of different ways of uh, quantifying the power in, in the, uh, uh, from different uh, types of designs we had and uh, different kinds of methodologies. So that's going to be Peter Jansen, who's a professor at uh, Bucknell. And then we're going to have uh, the engineers from uh, Columbia Technologies here talking about pathway and timing the commercialization. And the other aspect of it being the, um, the conversion of the light, which is going to be uh, Massimo. And we had Brad uh, Siskovich uh, to follow up with uh, John DiCarlo, who's chief technology officer at, uh, at Columbia Technologies, working on instrumentation, sensing, controls, uh, so we can make the light that then would illuminate the concentrator photovoltaic panels that uh, Massimo is working on. With that, I'll uh, turn it over to Colin. Okay. Well, we'll get me out of the way of the boring stuff before we can get to the exciting stuff. Uh, I, this was really, I was asked to say a few words about um, setting the scene for uh, what I see in industry in my area in terms of some of the challenges that we've got uh, with renewables. And if we look at uh, the worldwide energy consumption on service providers, we're about 8% of the global consumption and we're growing. And if you think about it as, as a service provider, our transmission, you know, in the UK, we consume a massive amount, amount of energy. Uh, but also our data centers, um, I don't need to tell you, consume an incredible amount of energy to keep it cool. Data centers around the world um, are just voracious in terms of their en energy appetites. But a lot of us around the world, um, to use our area in particular uh, as an example, we've actually been driving down as we start to make commitments uh, for renewable energies and being a, a better commitments to, for a better future is around driving down our electricity use even though we're growing as a business, thinking of better ways but also making commitments to renewables. So if you look at this, uh, we, we spend about 400 million each year in electricity. We've been driving it down year on year as you can see the, grow, uh, the reduction there, uh, but yet our bills are still going up. In the UK, uh, our uh, energy costs are some of the highest in the world. Um, and we're going to continue to reduce. Now, if I look at some of the commitments that we've made, we've signed a deal with our suppliers for 100% renewables uh, three years ago, and we've been working towards that. And this year, um, if we think about our reduction on carbon emissions is another area in terms of our consumption and um, we came in uh, in the tops in the last three years this year at the beginning of October it was announced again that we were number one in the FTSE top 100 companies in the UK uh, for carbon reduction so in terms of as a company um, we're absolutely committed however that kind of keeps uh, creates a uh, uh, both an opportunity for others to follow but also a challenge. So if you think about the uh, share of the UK power mix, you're looking at the hydro, it, it, it's, it's pretty flat so you can't take, I'm originally from Canada so you know, you've got lots there with the mountains but in the UK that's quite uh, problematic. There's a big push on wind, bioenergy, bioenergy, solar, uh, but then you look at some of the traditionals as we've been driving down nationally coal, uh, but you see gas uh, and nuclear is actually growing as well. But it's a challenge. If all the other providers that are in the UK were actually to sign up and to be as aggressive as we are and committed to renewable energy and carbon reduction, we would be, with that landscape and the time that it takes to bring on additional capability that is renewable, that gives us a challenge in terms of the other people that are out there. Um, 
in terms of supply and demand. If you think about some of the other folks that are out there that are making commitments to do this, this creates a tension in the market that we've got between supply and demand in terms of renewables. So everybody in industry is really interested in additional opportunities and that's kind of like a selfish imperative from that perspective where you've got a, a, a double bottom line. There's the, the, the benefit to us as corporates but also the, the benefit to climate and, and, and the wider community. So you know if I was to say a plea out there to industry who you know uh, people who are generating alternative energy forms you know as industry we need an alternative additional alternative energy source to meet the demands of our industry uh, renewable efforts while th they're great we need more but they're not meeting the growing demand especially as others start to get on board these initiatives as well and you know uh, this this will hit the bottom line for a lot of the businesses right now and it's certainly a commitment that, that we're doing as well so hopefully that's a quick few words to give you a, an idea in our sector what we're living and certainly what we're committed from that perspective around um, uh, being a better steward of our future and in terms of renewable energy I think I can hand over to somebody far more qualified to talk about this so Kurt over to you. There you are. Excellent. So this is an honor to be here.